Usually when you think of a mutant that can clone itself, you might think of Multiple Man, a very annoying X-Men, or perhaps a Mogwai, or a Tribble, but in real life, we have a mutant that can clone itself. It's a crayfish. What we have in particular is the marbled crayfish, sometimes called, and this is more interesting to me, the marmacreb. Yeah. So these are actually uh, mutants that are able to clone themselves and are currently all over Europe and other parts of the world as well because they are very hardy. What's funny is this creature did not exist until 25 years ago. And it's an interesting route as to where it came from, where a creature that can asexually produce, much like the 1998 Godzilla, but hopefully less horrifying and boring to watch. Frank Lyko is a biologist in the German Cancer Research Center. And he is able to, or he has, uh, went on trips to go find these marbled crayfish. And they're very easy to find because all you have to do, according to him, is wade into a nearby lake wait till night, and then they're just everywhere. He says he's grabbed 150 with his hands alone in one trip, which is a lot, because these crayfish lay many eggs at one time. Um, over 100 is what it was described by him, enormous batches of eggs. And what he thinks they came from was in, 19, in the 1990s, he knew a, or he's been able to track down a, a hobbyist, some kind of German aquarium hobbyist who was able to adopt what he called a Texas crayfish at the time. And it produced way too many eggs, so many that this guy had to give them away to his friends. There's just, he can't house this many crayfish. And then eventually from those people and perhaps from him himself, the crayfish got jumped into nearby lakes and uh, the, they, they started mating with other crayfish in the area. According to Lyco, they had to map the crayfish genome, which was very hard. And they found that it went back to a sing, they eventually made a single map of this. And they think what happened was um, that this species of asexual crayfish came from a descendant of that specifically through the slough crayfish. And that they found that two slough crayfish mated, but one of them had a mutation in a sex cell. And uh, they weren't able to tell what happened, but they had a mutation which caused them to essentially uh, produce a female that was able to, uh, had eggs already able to be laid and viably hatch on their own. Um, so normal sex cells have a single copy of each chromosome, but the mutant crayfish sex cell had two. And with that, it was able to create what was essentially a clone after scientists were able to um, check into their, their DNA and see what the chromosomes were. It was all essentially a copy of a copy of a copy of a copy. It's, and um, sometimes they would mate with male slough crayfish, but they weren't able to, father any baby crayfish, they weren't viable, which is interesting because it, it makes it so only one type of crayfish is dominant and that is the clone species. And it's just the same one over and over and over. And Dr. Lyko and colleagues officially declared the marbled crayfish a species of its own. And they're a little concerned about the viability of the species because while it is able to reproduce a lot right away, very easily, it's not necessarily a great formula for longevity because with many creatures, uh, let's just give humans as an example, we don't asexually produce. We have to mate with other humans and that leads to gene diversity and that makes it so if one kind of disease wipes out one kind of person, that that those people might be wiped out, but there's still other people around. And that was probably what is going to happen to the marbled crayfish. Dr. Lyko suspects they may survive for only 100,000 years, which to me sounds like a lot, but in the massive timeline of the world, it's not that much. Though it is interesting to see that it all went back to one freaky mutant crayfish that started it all. The crayfish is able to also be viable in different parts of the world, including Madagascar, where they are apparently taking the hell over. Audience, 
Is it a good thing to have species that are able to asexually produce, or do you see where that might be a flaw? Please let us know on Facebook and Twitter.